All right, man. All right, man, so brothers are out here, man, once again to give all praises to the Most High God of Israel, whose true name will be Yahweh, and to his only begotten Son, whose true name will be Yahweh Shai, all right? So all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Kadash. That's how you utter the Most High God's true name and his only begotten Son's true name in the ancient Paleo Hebrew tongue. I say double honors to the elders who've been doing the work in sincerity. Starting off with the elders of Great Millstone and to you other elders on down, to you brothers who are walking in those steps of trying to fulfill the will of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. I say peace and salutations and uh, also peace to the elect of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Today, consisting of you Negro, Latinos, Native American Indians, and so called Hispanics. So getting straight into it, Isaiah 40. And one, comfort ye, comfort ye my people, save your God. Speak you comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is parted, for she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. So we are commanded to come out here to speak uh, really the gospel, man. All right? The gospel is that good news. We're supposed to comfort your soul with the word of the Most High Yahweh Shem You see, preach the good news, preach the gospel, man. Let the Israelites know. All right, the children of Israel know that their their uh, their warfare or their captivity is almost up. All right, Yahweh Shah was here two thousand years ago, and we're preaching the same thing he was preaching two thousand years ago. All right, because at that time, man, the apostles, the disciples of the Lord. They believe that they, they believe basically that the Lord Yahweh Shah came on the earth to basically bring Israel back into power at that time. You see, they thought in that generation Yahweh Shah was about to restore Israel, not knowing that it was going to be a whole two thousand years later. You see, so what we're doing right now is we're preaching, man. We're, pro we're proclaiming that good news that it's almost up. Although you know Israel been in captivity for centuries all right it's all it's actually almost up man all right we in them days where our forefathers had it man it's not a lot it's not a fucking lot man. it's a lot here, man yeah we in the we in them days man we in them days where our forefathers had hope for man you see they've been looking for this day for thousands and thousands of years and we're, we're finally in that time where we can say that we can safely say that yeah, it's this generation, you see? We can actually safely say that within our lifetime, we're gonna see Yahweh Shai. We're gonna see the second coming. We're gonna see the restoration of Israel. It's not gonna be our children's children, all right? Now the Lord can do what he wants to do, but we understand through biblical prophecy that we're at the end of Satan's kingdom, all right? We're at the end of Esau's kingdom, all right? If you put prophecy together, there's no need to guess, man. There's no need to guess, you know, where we are, where, where we're at in biblical prophecy. We're right at the end, man. All right, right before Esau institutes his mark, right before, uh, you know, America goes on a downcline and ultimately Jacob's trouble hits. These things are around the corner. And then that's all we need to fulfill the rest of these prophecies in order for Yahweh Shah to return, you see? And it's not gonna take no hundred years, man. We're not finna wait no hundred years for the mark of the beast and basically Jacob's trouble. America doesn't got a hundred years. America got more like less than five years, you see? Now I'm not saying the Lord's finna come at a specific time because nobody knows that, you see? Nobody knows the exact moment or the exact year the Most High has placed into his power for his hand. But we do understand we're very close. We are uh, extremely close. I, 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 as a matter of fact, um, you, do you have uh, Yeah, so here's Romans 13 and 11. And that knowing the time, that now is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than what we believe. Okay, so our salvation is nearer than what we believe. Okay, and that even goes for our forefathers before us, you know, 
like you know apostles the apostles that followed Yahweh Shah, the disciples that followed Yahweh Shah, they thought the time you know they thought the kingdom was going to come in their time you know peter you know he took out his sword and you know he cut off the uh you know someone's ear you know that was coming after Yahweh Shah. they thought that you know the kingdom was coming in their time and they would fight for the kingdom in that time you know which they were but you know the kingdom wasn't coming then but now our salvation is nearer than we when we believe because all prophecy you know points to that points to that you know we are in those last times in that last hour and you know at the very very last you know so we will be seeing you know we will be seeing the end all right but uh yes about it right there i'll get this in acts 1 and 6 when they therefore were come together they asked of him saying lord will thou at this time restore the kingdom again to israel and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father has placed in his own power so they like like we, we like we've been saying man uh they had believed that yahweh was supposed to do his uh put his kingdom on the earth at that current moment yahweh said it's not for you to know that all right basically saying it's nah not yet but ultimately you know these prophecies got to be fulfilled man you see ultimately we can say now that we're at that current point of prophecy where Yahweh Shai is about to make his second coming. He's about to make that second return because right now you got the Edomites, the so-called Caucasian man, ruling the earth. And that lines up directly with biblical prophecy. You see? Let me get this right here for the second Ezra. Alright, uh, second Ezra. Chapter 6 and verses 7, uh, 6 and 8. Uh, I'll start 6 and 7. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that following? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So, a good pinpoint and prophecy, you know, to realize like what time we're in. Esau, Edom, the Caucasian is going to be ruling. All right, he's going to be ruling in his kingdom, Babylon the Great. All right, because you got to be well rounded in prophecy. You got to understand and be able to put two and two together. It tells you in the Book of Revelations that Babylon the Great is going to be that last kingdom, all right? that great whore. Yeah, that, that great whore, man, that abomination of the earth. So you put two and two together, what kingdom right now is on the top, man? What kingdom is superior to the, all other kingdoms? America, you see? It's that abomination that everybody else of the earth hates, you see? America has got America is the most lawless kingdom to ever arise in human history. Really, uh, it's worse than Sodom. It's worse than uh, what Nineveh. You see, all these different kingdoms that were about to be destroyed by the Most High God in time past. America has far exceeded any type of wickedness that can can possibly be done. You see, by a kingdom, it tells you that in the Book of Revelations, uh, chapter 18. You see. Which, you know, if you want to get there, I don't want to get too off the topic because we're going into Esau. Esau being the end of the world, all right? Let's get this to show you that Esau is synonymous with Babylon the Great, all right? That last rulership, Esau's time is about to be up. See, Esau, this damn devil, his time is about to be up for his rule. Uh, Psalms 137 and seven. Um, yeah, seven. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. Happy shall ye be that rewarded thee as I serve us. Yeah, man. So Esau, Edom, is going to be the end of the world. But we just read here in the book of Psalms 137 that Edom is the daughter of Babylon. 
meaning Babylon the Great. So we understand by putting things together through prophecy and through common sense that yeah, we in that kingdom, man. All right. And it says that, and it says Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So right after Esau falls, right after America gets taken out of power during World War III, America, I mean uh, uh, Israel, you know the kingdom of Israel, Yasharala, they're going to be that next kingdom to rule, man. That's when the kingdom of heaven is going to come. That's when Yahweh Shah is going to put his kingdom on earth, you see? And we're living in them times, man. You see, we're living in those times. All right, you got to do something? Yeah, I wanted to say something. Because, you know, in time past, for being honest, in time past, you know, like 2,000 years ago, 1,000 years ago, you know, 3,000 years ago, those, those empires and those nations that ruled in those times, they probably they probably look holy compared to uh, uh, the yeah. time we're in now. Yeah. You know, here in Babylon the Great, and we know you know according to prophecy, the Lord was going to make this place a, 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 a lake of fire. You know, He was going to lay His fury down in Babylon the Great. He's going to lay His fury down in this nation, all right, this empire, because how wicked it is. You know, so according to prophecy, you know, the the nations in time past obviously they weren't the end. Okay, but this nation right here is. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to, uh, let me see here. I'll go to Colossians first. Colossians 1 and 26. It says, even the mysteries which have been hid from ages and from generations, and they are open. but now is made manifest to his saints. So in other words, the Lord, our Yahweh Yahweh Shah, he's allowing his waters to come down into the earth. Okay, we know that the Lord, He's allowing, He's allowing more knowledge to come down into the earth, so that okay, and the Lord is allowing prophecy pretty much to be unlocked in your mind. You understand what's really going on, and you're able to pair it up with the times you're in right now. So going to Joel chapter three and thirteen, I'll go to twelve. It says, "Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit." To judge all the heathen round about. 13 is one on one. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. The vats overflow, their wickedness is great. Okay, so, and that's talking about Babylon the Great. Or that's talking about, uh, uh, you know, the nation we're in right now. The vats overflow, the wickedness is great. Okay, the, the, uh, the, the vine is ripe. So that's talking about, you know, how, how the sins of heaven slock you. The sins of Babylon the Great, okay, America have reached into heaven. Okay, and the Lord's gonna come back to, you know, slay everything down here, okay? That that's made of wickedness. Uh, yeah. Revelation. <coughs> I got Revelations 12 verse 12. And it's like it. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth he had but a short time you see so that's another prophecy showing you that this dragon this damn devil esau he knows he had but a short time his kingdom he understands that it's only going to go for so long before you have Hashim Yashai cuts it off you see because this, this this nation america you can't sit here thinking that lord is going to allow such a wicked kingdom to rule i mean like we said this is more wicked than sodom this is more wicked than uh, uh, like Nineveh and these different kingdoms that the Lord destroyed with fire and brimstone. If you believe America has got a chance to survive, you're out of your mind. It can't stand on its feet for too long. I, the economy is going to break down eventually. You see? So even if, to say, the Lord didn't destroy the place, America is going to destroy itself from the inside out. You see? So at the end of the day, America has got so long left before, they can, before they're being taken down. And the devil, meaning Esau, because the word devil, that actually means, it's, it's referring to a person, you see? The word devil is not referring to a demon or a spiritual demon that's not of this earth. All right? It's referring to an actual man who deceives. All right? That word devil means to deceive. All right? Somebody who forges lies. All right? Somebody who um, basically takes a truth and turns it into a lie. 
which is what Esau has done. Right? Esau has turned the truth into a lie. He has turned what's good into, uh, he has turned what's evil to good and what's good to evil. You see? So we understand that that devil or that deceiver is not talking about Satan, but it's ultimately referring to so-called white man, Esau Edom, dwelling within Babylon the Greek. Right? He's got but a short time, and once his time is up, he understands that he has no more space to rule. All right. All right, so here's Job chapter 20 and 4. It says, Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon the earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of a hypocrite but for a moment? Though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? So again, America, like the brother was going into, America is on life support, all right? America is going down. In other words, the things that the, the media may say, the things that, you know, the, these uh, uh, really false prophets may say, because they're, they're trying to predict what's going to come, all right? They're trying to predict, you know, what's going to come of the economy, what's going to come of their whole perception of whatever's going to come. All right, they believe in a, a new world. They believe in uh, 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 tracking everybody and making everybody a, a damn cyborg, you know? They believe in, you know, having all this electric, you know, uh, new technical advance, you know, whatever it is. They believe in that, yeah. you know? And they believe that that's gonna, that's gonna happen and that their wor world is gonna prolong itself and persist. But it's not, okay? It's not. This is only, this is only, you know, in their mind, they have an agenda, they have an enterprise that's gonna be, uh, uh, that's gonna fall headlong. Not sloppy, I forget where that one is. But let me go ahead and, and continue. All right, I might be in this chapter. Right like that. So it says, he shall fly away as a dream. He shall not be found, yet he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more, neither shall his place uh, any more behold him. So, in other words, according to prophecy, Esau is going to be the last wicked kingdom to rule, okay? This is his last go, okay? This is the last go around for the heathen and their rule over Jacob, over Israel. This is the last go around for them, man, all right? Because in the end, we know who wins, okay? We know who gets a victory, and that's Jacob. Okay, that's, that's uh, through Yahweh by Shemel Shai. You're gonna get the victory, all right? And, and, and uh, you know, the victory over death, which is we know is uh, sin, okay? Because the way of sin is death. So, and we know this place, America, Babylon the Great, whether you know it or not, this place actually revolves around sin and wickedness, okay? The way this place is so great and so high and the earth is because they're wicked, okay? This whole place is wicked. All right, and, and, and again, whether you know it or not, you know, the, the, the kings of this place, you know, they're doing all type of uh, uh, magic, you know, they're doing all type of, uh, uh, what's, what's it called? All type of magic and astrology and all, all, all type of uh, 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 wickedness, okay? And that's how they get their power, because, because of sin. But we know the wages of sin is death. So again, if the wages of sin, of sin is death, and this place is full of sin, is reaching unto the heavens, we know that this place is going to be a, a, a land of death soon to come. Right, man. Yeah, soon um, to come. Yeah. Let's get this last piece up here in the book of Isaiah. 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and he will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined unto them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. All right, going back to the beginning of the lesson, that how our iniquity is almost accomplished. The warfare of the children of Israel, Zion, is about to be up, you see? I mean, it's not up yet because you still do got Jacob's trouble, but I mean, we're closer than we've ever been in human history, you see? We're, we're, we're closer than we've ever been. We got a few prophecies left, and you know, those are the elect, you gotta stay strong, all right? You gotta stay strong. And trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Have faith until death because 
ultimately, we don't know what's coming up in the days to come. But we understand through his prophecies that he's promised us certain things, all right? He's promised his servants that they're going to eat. He's promised a lot of these things, and it's going to take faith, you see? This is going to take believing in what the Lord told us. The Lord's not going to help those who don't believe in his word, who don't really show forth um, their belief. And really that belief will be shown through, you know, your works. You, uh, you know, you out here making a conscious effort. You out here making an effort to, you know, come back to Yahweh Hashem Yahshai and repent. Because nobody's perfect. But you're making that effort. And you're trying your best to wax stronger in Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. You, hey, the Lord's not, the Lord's not a man that he's going to lie, man. You see? So at the end of the day, we got to understand that the prophecies do and tell that you're going to have destruction coming. All right? There's also a, a, a good side, there's balance, because the Lord has his evil side and he has his good side. So while the wicked is getting the evil, the righteous are going to be protected under, under the shadow of the Almighty. Like it tells you, because that has made the Lord that habitation, even the Lord that, that refuge, he's going to protect you in the day of evil. You're going to have a thousand falling at your right hand, ten thousand on the left or something like that, it's locked in. 10,000 on the right hand, you have like a thousand on the left hand. He says, No evil shall befall thee. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in thy way. And that's paraphrasing Psalms 91. You can read it because that's really what the elect can look forward to being under the, sh the shadow of the Almighty when the unrighteous don't have that secret place, you see? But you're going to be in that secret place because you were fearing you. How about Shimei you see? Lord, the Lord has mercy on those that fear him. He delivereth them. You see? Oh. Yeah, for sure. So here's uh, Psalm chapter 37. Okay, it's locked. Give me a second. Yeah, so here's Psalm 37. 17. He says, For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. And also, you know, like you were going into. Also, like you're going into, uh, the, these people are going to pay for what they've done to the prophets, even in time past. Because if you understand, there's regeneration. And those same people that are going to pay for for the the prophets in time past are paying just you know justly you know they're paying because of what they did you know so in each lifetime you know if you are wicked enough to go after the prophets you the lord put that wicked spirit on you to go after the the, the men of the lord who speak the truth and, and you're just you just couldn't take the truth for whatever reason it was like in, in today's time people can't take the truth because they want to be a part of society you know they want to be a part of society and they want they don't want to be an outcast you know so if you ra if you'd rather be a part of a community rather than to to to, to uh get down with what's true and what's right that just says a lot about you man that just it tells you that you wicked all right that you are wicked all right you deserve death Actually, but i'm gonna go on i do have the precept on that all right if you want uh to just bring out the account in Luke chapter 11 verse 50 that the blood of all the prophets which were shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias which perished between the altar and the temple verily I say unto you it shall be required of this generation Ooh, that's, um, that's heavy bro because it says from the foundation of the world, man. Yeah. So from Abel all the way till till now, and that's not even counting prophets after that, man. You see, that's crazy. That's so crazy. Uh, you don't want to be a part of that, man. You don't you don't want to be when uh, part of when the Lord comes down with His fury to judge this land. You want to be under that protection, you know? Hey. Yeah, even even the men who pierce you out with shy, they're gonna see that, man. Hey. So. Yeah. All these, all these things that people have done in their past life, 
will come to power. Will be, will be made manifest, okay? It's gonna be made manifest in the days to come. And you're gonna understand what's going on then, you know? So here goes, uh, going on. It says, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and the inheritance shall be forever. It's talking about the kingdom of heaven, all right? Because the inheritance will be forever, you know? The, the saints shall take the kingdom, you know, it will be forever and ever. What's going on? They shall not be ashamed in the time, in the evil time. In the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord, because, because if you come up against, if you come up against the people who speak the truth, you're not coming up against them. You're an enemy of the Most High. You, you hate the Most High. You don't hate us. You hate the words that are coming. You hate, you're hating the messenger, but you're really hating the Most High. Well, let me go on, because you, you're an enemy of the Most High. Shall be as the fat lambs, they shall consume in the smoke, they shall consume away. Like a burnt offering, you know, a fat offering, I mean. So, in other words, you're going you're gonna to be burned, okay? And that, that uh, uh, parallels right, right along with Joel, the third chapter. You know, where the, the, the lambs are fat, the fruit is ripe, and, and the Lord's going to just burn it all the way. You see? That's what they did with the fat oil. They burned it all away. You know, you can, you can basically see Spirit of Yahweh moving in the earth to the point to where it's like, you can basically say this kingdom is finished. Although we do know we're still living in it, but it's damn near done, you see? So let's get this in the book of Lamentations. Okay, Lamentations chapter four and 20 and 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of us, the cup shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thy iniquity, iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So, you, hey man, like the Lord said, our, our punishment is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry us away into captivity. All right, after this captivity, this is that last captivity. No, no longer is the Israelites gonna go off because we're gonna have the new covenant. We're gonna have those new bodies. We're gonna be having the law, statutes, commandments uh, program within our inward parts, you see? And then that, that just means that we're never gonna go off. So, hey man, we can't wait for that. But while we're waiting, you know, Esau Edom, his kingdom's coming down and he's gotta get ready to drink of that cup that we drunk of. See, we, we received of the Abashim Yasha double for what we really did. The Lord destroyed the Israelites, the Israelites double time over than what they actually did, you see? We did a lot of sins, but the Abashim Yasha gave our people a double. I tell you that in Isaiah 40, that the Lord has given unto us double for what we, uh, you know, he's given us a double punishment. But shit, man, it tells you that Esau, um, you know, Esau's going to drink twice as much as, as we got. So if we receive double, Esau's going to receive double of that, man. Shit. I can't even imagine, you know, how hard that's going to be. And that's, that's the exact reason why in the book of Obadiah, it tells you that there shall be none remaining of the house of Edom. I mean, you, you people, man, a lot of these people think that Esau, you know, the Edomites, you know, they can make it. Not knowing they're going into captivity, hardcore bondage, and they're going to receive double of what we got. You see, if you thought our slavery was bad, to this day, Esau Edom is not going to have no breaks until he's eradicated off the planet Earth. You see, man. You see, so you know, you know, like I said, man. At the end of the day, man, that's the truth of the Bible. That's um, that's just prophecy, you know, and that's the most high's will. All right, you got reset. So we want to give all praises to, oh. and, I, and I, I gotta say this, man, we got to give all praises that we're Israelites, man. <laughs> we gotta give all praises to the Most High that we are Israelites, okay. that we're not no Edomite, <laughs> that we're not no other heathen, because then we would be on the other side of the Most High. 
So we we give all praises to the Most High Yah Bashmiyasha for allowing us to be an Israelite, not only an Israelite, but an Israelite who can understand. You see, if you are if you are an Israelite who can potentially be of that elect number, man, you are blessed beyond measure. You see, I mean, this is this is this is like Yahweh I said. Them who, uh, if you stumble across this truth, it's like you stumbled across a treasure in the field. You see? It's like you're walking in the field and you stumble you stumble across a big piece of you know treasure full of gold riches rubies diamonds you know that's what we that's what we come across man all right we come across this um this heavenly knowledge which is going to ultimately ultimately lead to the kingdom of the most high the most uh, the most high god which we will be kings we will have new bodies i mean hey man money can't buy what's gonna come you see I mean, money can't buy this knowledge for its purpose because Solomon told you gold and silver is as sand and, and you know it's basically like sand before wisdom you see you can't buy wisdom man you can't buy this truth you can't buy the spirit this is something that the Lord got a gift to you give it to you as a gift and then you cultivate that gift and ultimately it leads to an everlasting kingdom man that's beautiful let me get that right quick Solomon. Alright. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5. Okay, Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 15. But the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with the Lord, and the care of them is with the Most High. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with his from Maslaki, for with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arms shall he protect them. See? So for the righteous you live forevermore, man. You're you're you are an immortal, man. That is beautiful, man. That's crazy. Esau's tried so hard to become an immortal, but really you finna get immortality. You finna get a, a, a rulership, you finna get a dominion that shall never be tarnished, you see? A, a dominion that shall never fall. You finna go to different planets, different galaxies. Something Esau has tried to do, you know, so-called NASA. They never been able to go, you know, I don't even think they went to the moon. They probably haven't went to the moon. But you finna go all across the universe. You see? You finna have a journey. I mean, what can, like how, like these things are not accessible to these human, human people. Uh, you can't buy it with no amount of money. That's a gift for me. How about you, me? How sharp, man? You see? How beautiful is that? What's it telling in the book of Daniel? Let's get that last piece. Book of Daniel, chapter 7. That's right. Okay, the book of Daniel, chapter 7. Seven and twenty-seven, and the kingdom, and the dominion, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. This kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey Him. So that's uh, what the saints are going to get. You see, this is this is something that you got to. Uh, the Lord's looking for the humble. The Lord's looking for the meek of the earth right now. Um, he's really looking for his elect. And he's building them up in these last days to be rulers and to be kings. You see, that's what we're looking for, man. So with that, we want to give all praises to Yahweh by Shimon Yahweh Shabbat Shimon Kadosh. We say Shalom.